Hey guys, thanks so much for uh, hanging around to the end here. It's so great to be here in Oklahoma City. It's my first time here. Uh, before we get to, uh, I'm just waiting for the clicker here, but before we get into all the details of this presentation, uh, just a very, very important disclaimer, okay? Uh, so there's different types of presentations, okay? And, and um, when I was putting together this presentation, I didn't just like read a bunch of press releases and summarize the information, okay? No, no, that's not one of those presentations. Uh, instead, this is one of these kind of weird presentations where I did a bunch of weird experiments on my own. Uh, it's, this is not official Google stuff. Uh, it's just some crazy experiments and, and, and a little bit of digital marketing is about you know, experimentation and all this stuff. And, and so I just wanted to share with you some of the, some of the findings f from all these experiments. Oh, great. So it, we have this click. The trick with it is you've got to point at that computer. In the meantime, the okay. longer it is. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Uh, and, and, and with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's begin. We're talking about uh, kind of these new uh, machine learning algorithms that are kind of replacing the older Google search, organic search rankings, uh, sort of what you need to know to, sur to survive uh, SEO judgment day. And here we go. So guys, imagine one day, not too far off into the, into the distant future, uh, where uh, you know, you're doing your SEO thing, content marketing, you're doing the blog thing, only to find, you, know, you, you get into your office and boom, all the, all the rankings that you worked so hard on uh, to, 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 to get the ranking for, for the top three spots, all blown away. Uh, kind of like their fate determined in milliseconds by a new order of machine learning algorithms. And that is exactly what happened two years from today, approximately, you know, in October 20, uh, 2018, Google's 20th birthday, uh, and, and, and uh, that, that's known as SEO Judgment Day, uh, the day when Google sort of switched over their core algorithms from kind of these heuristic algorithms to more machine learning algorithms. Uh, and, and it wasn't just the, the ranking algorithms, it was all across the board, uh, rankings uh, algorithms, spam detection algorithms, image search, video, query interpretation, e uh, even the core ranking algorithms, all switching over from, from manual algorithms to machine learning ones. Uh, millions, of millions and millions of these websites across the world were impacted, including websites that had managed to fly under the radar from previous updates like Panda uh, and, and Penguin. Uh, and so in a desperate attempt, to save our website's future and our children's website's future, John Connor, the leader of the SEO rebellion uh, in the year 2020, has sent me back in time uh, to the present day at Confluence Conference to, armed with information of the future to enable you to, to, with tactics and strategies to survive SEO Judgment Day. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when I say SEO Judgment Day is exactly two years from today, I uh, just want to have a little time travel disclaimer. Uh, time travel is very tricky, uh, and my presence here at this conference has no doubt altered the timeline. So uh, just please take this stuff with a grain of salt. All right, so let's get back to our topic. What's machine learning? Um, Google search today, believe it or not, it's incredible, uh, is, is not a machine learning uh, based system. It's, it's known as a heuristic s system. It's just a bunch of hand-coded rules, like. When I say a bunch of them, I mean like millions of them. Uh, Hand-coded rules for organizing and processing the world's information so that every time you search on a keyword, the right result comes up, okay? I don't know how they did it, but it's, it's hand-coded. Uh, and, and, and so uh, that's, been the that, that, that's been the history of they, you know, every six months or whatever, they roll out a manual update uh, of, of the index. Uh, so that's changing, okay? So uh, the, the uh, Google search of, of today and of the future is becoming increasingly machine learning based, okay? So what does that mean? Uh, it's also, some people call it AI powered or neural networks or whatever. But basically the thing that you need to know is that uh, uh, the, the system, they do, it does a check to see whether or not the intent of the searcher was met or not. Uh, like, did, did we provide the correct result or not? Uh, and based on those uh, results, um, it'll make adjustments. Uh, like, uh, uh, you know, if, some, if no one's clicking on this thing, then they'll, they'll push it down sort of thing, all right? So uh, where does Google use machine learning? Uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, even, even though uh, this whole rank brain stuff made a big news splash last November, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it, that's kind of a laggard. It's been used everywhere else in, in Google uh, pretty substantially, uh, including their, uh, their speech AP APIs, their translation APIs, their image search APIs, uh, that YouTube even uses. 
uh, like YouTube doesn't have links or, or a lot of text. So like how do they rank videos and how do they uh, c compute related videos? It's all based on uh, AI or, or machine learning based suggestions uh, using user engagement. Uh, uh, in, a, in a video from Matt Cutts uh, about three years ago, uh, it, it was entitled like, how does Google rank porn? Uh, so basically he mused that uh, the, the, the current ranking system wasn't working in all the different verticals because uh, in, in the porn vertical, uh, believe it or not, uh, shocking, uh, authoritative sites don't like to link to pornography sites, and so they didn't have a, a good amount of, of trusted rank data to use uh, in the pornography vertical. And so uh, he suggested, he didn't explicitly say how they do it, but he kind of suggested that there's some other things that they're trying out, and I make this one bold prediction, however Google is ranking porn, that is the future of organic search. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, uh, machine, uh, machine learning is nothing new to AdWords. That's kind of my core area of expertise. Uh, the, the, the system, since it was first invented 15 years ago, was machine learning from day one. Uh, it's not necessary for me to bid on every keyword in the universe. I can just put in 10 of them, and, and it, what it does is within the first 200 impressions, it, it tests to see what types of queries uh, it thinks should be relevant to these ads. Uh, and that's kind of how that system works. It doesn't use links or, uh, or at all. Uh, the Facebook news feed, that's all machine learning based. Uh, you tend to see more of the updates from the friends that you actually engage with and, and fewer updates from the friends that you don't engage with. Uh, even stupid Twitter ads are machine learning based. So basically what I'm trying to say is that, that these machine learning systems are pretty much everywhere uh, with the Google algorithms, the search algorithms being kind of the laggard but, uh, but, but, but quickly uh, catching up here. Uh, and so. Uh, a lot of times I get in trouble on Twitter uh, because I say things about, uh, about the algorithms and, and how, uh, the semantics of like, oh, is it a core ranking signal or is this a validation, secondary validation signal? Like, my point is, uh, if, it, if, if the algorithms were changing, uh, I, I think it doesn't really matter what we call it, uh, that you should care uh, and, 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 you know, just come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, I know it's a lot to drop on you guys. Uh, I just told you that all these websites are going to be blown away, and that I've been sent back in time two years from the future to save you using arm weapons and tactics from the future. And I'm sure you're wondering who the hell is this guy, and, and, and why did they just send like a real SEO expert like Rand Fishkin or someone who knows what they're talking about? And um, and I'm I, I'm I'm sorry, sorry to say. Um, they actually tried. John Connor uh, reached out to Rand, but he was just not available due to uh, a really wildly successful movie uh, junket that was going on. Next year, he actually publishes this, this book. Uh, it turns out to be a really wildly popular bestseller, and, and he just wasn't available to help us out, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so I was selected as the alternate. <laughs> So let me, uh, let me just give you a couple, couple of random facts about myself. Uh, as your time traveling companion, I'm the founder of WordStream, started it back in 2008, about uh, eight years ago by this timeline. Uh, I started it originally out of a bakery called Panera Bread because of the free Wi-Fi and, unli and unlimited Diet Coke refills. Uh, I was probably like a lot of you guys, actually. I was a one, uh, kind of a solopreneur, if you will, uh, like one-man show, uh, doing internet marketing consulting. The company has grown a lot in the last eight years. Uh, today, uh, I manage approximately $1 billion of ad spend. That's uh, roughly 2% of the entire Google AdWords budget. They're only, they only do about $50 billion. So, you know, one out of every 50 cents spent on Google runs through my company. We have over 10,000 com over 10,000 customers worldwide. Uh, and and I, I employ over 200 people uh, in my headquarters in Boston, so we were able to get out of the Panera Bread. Uh, uh, another, a couple other things about myself. My background is actually not in marketing, it's in electrical engineering. Um, in fact, the time traveling um, committee took that into consideration. Uh, <laughs> they thought that my t technical background w w was applicable uh, because among other things, uh, I wrote a, a, a suite of keyword research tools personally, including like related keyword tools and all this stuff for computing like synonyms and related terms and all this stuff. And then I, I, this actually feeds into like a lot of how these systems work. Um, anyways, uh, back to our story, enough about me. What's Rank Brain or 
like, I mean, when I call it rank braid, let's just call that like a, a synonym for like these new machine learning algorithms in, in, in Google search. Uh, and so what they're saying is it's uh, this notion of qu query interpretation that changes rank, all right? Uh, and so what, what, what does that mean? What you really need to know is how does this thing work? Uh, and so basically, the way I think it works, again, this is not an official diagram, this is my own kind of experimentation. I think how it works uh, is that when someone now searches for a query, the rank brain system, or whatever, the, we're just gonna call it rank brain, but it's like uh, that these AI powered algorithms um, makes a guess as to what it thinks you're looking for, all right? Uh, and then it has to make a, a determination was the, the results that I provided the correct uh, int, uh, user uh, answers to, to the user's queries, yes or no? Uh, if yes, uh, then the algorithm makes a note of it. It says, great, this is fantastic. Next time I get a query like this from people like this, I'm gonna provide this answer again. Uh, and, and the opposite is if, if, you know, if you don't click on the results or if you click on it and you bounce away right away, uh, then it's gonna, it's gonna fail. Uh, so it'll, it'll make note of that and say like, you know, that's probably not the right thing. Uh, next time I see a query like this, I'm gonna make a change. I'll try something else. So that's how uh, my, my simplified diagram of, of how these algorithms work. Uh, let, let's just take a stop right there. Are you with me here? Yes. All right. So. This is a big change because before all these rankings, it's all based on just links and keywords, right? And now there's this new sheriff in town, uh, user engagement metrics, uh, you know, that are that are trying to figure out like that are that are basically um, adjusting rank based on uh, user engagement metrics like click-through rates, etc. Uh, and so basically, uh, if it's such a big deal, like you know, Google calls it their third biggest ranking factor. Uh, if it really is such a big deal, you would expect to be able to measure it, right? It's just an algorithm, any, and it's, it's a math, any mathematical thing can be cracked, right? Uh, and so, uh, if it really is such a big deal, we should be able to see evidence of this algorithm impacting our search results. And that is exactly what I was sent back in time to do, uh, which was to, to find a fingerprint for rank brain. And I, I think I found it here. Uh, and so basically what we're looking at is what's a good click-through rate? Uh, and the answer is, it's changing. Uh, so uh, over the p past six months, I've been tracking a thousand keywords uh, in terms of their rankings and their click-through rates uh, and, and what that looks like, uh, you know, from May, then June, then September, just like last week. And what's happening is that click-through rates in, in, top four uh, in top three positions are actually increasing, all right? Uh, and and, and click-through rates for the lower spots, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, uh, those are actually trending downwards because uh, what's, I think what, what we're seeing here is, is this is exactly the fingerprint that you would expect to see from a machine learning system, which is that it's reordering rankings, placing the things that are more likely to be clicked on towards the top and, and, and pushing things that are less likely to be clicked on towards the bottom. Uh, and this sort of confirms what, what I was uh, hypothesizing. Uh, and so basically, it's, it's a little complicated because um, this is what is known as a codependent relationship, like it's like what came first, the Terminator or Cyberdyne systems, right? The Cyberdyne systems built the first Terminator, but that first Terminator was built using the CPU of a Terminator that was sent back in time. So it's kind of like this causal loop, like which is causing which? Uh, and so in time travel, when this kind of codependency comes up, uh, the way that you analyze which is causing what is you do something called a, uh, it's, it, uh, you, you just normalize, you do a, re a relativistic analysis. Uh, so you basically back out the expected click-through rate for the different positions. And basically, um, you're, you're not looking at like just you're not looking at what the click-through rates are. You're saying whether or not the click-through rate is actually beating or being beaten by the expected click-through rate for a given spot. Okay, so this is a normalized uh, click-through rate versus a, uh, position. And, and what, what I found, what I discovered is that the more you beat the expected click-through rate for a given position in the search results page, the more likely you are to get a top three ranking. All right. If you if you if you fail to beat the the, the expected click through rate, you're much more likely to, to fall into those lower you know four five six seven eight nine ten positions. All right, uh, that's that's all you need to know. Uh, if if you can beat the click through rate, the expected click through rate for a given spot by three percent, uh, you'll you'll probably be pushed up to the next spot. Right. You got that? Uh, so um, th th we're talking averages here. Okay. Uh, so basically, my theory here is that these high click through rate keywords. 
get these additional bonus ranking boosts, if you will. Uh, and, and in fact, that's exactly what machine learning does. It makes, uh, makes things increasingly winner take all. So when you're thinking about your Facebook algorithm, it, fewer posts, uh, fewer spectacular posts will get more shares and likes. You see what I'm saying? So same thing with, with organic search. Uh, machine learning makes it, it favor the, 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 the more spectacular uh, results uh, and, and kind of the more average results gets pushed down the page. Uh, and so, guys, if this theory is correct, uh, you know, uh, and again, it's just my theory, the question becomes what should uh, search marketers do to prepare for uh, this and other machine language enabled algorithm updates and there's actually a, um, a lot of people out there who say like, oh, you know, Google says there's nothing big happening here. Uh, there's there, there's nothing nothing to see here. And, and like my point is like the company who makes these killer robots isn't gonna like tell you all the like the secret self-destruct codes and everything. You know, like it's not it's, it's not their that's not their job. You know, they're just PR spokespeople. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, and and there's other people out there who think I'm delusional. Uh, <laughs> and you should you should like block me and and. People not listen to it at any cost, uh, uh, but, but, but basically, um, uh, basically um, what, what I'm saying is if this is true and this is happening, what we need to do is we need to crush more of these additions. All right? This is a machine learning algorithm that, uh, that, that is additioning content against different keywords, and you've got to make it so that when your addition, your, your addition comes up, that you pass this thing with flying colors. Now the problem with this is that these machine learning enabled algorithms are a lot tougher to hack. Uh, then they're just like link building and, and, and all these other, you know, it's keyword stuffing and all the old bag of tricks. Um, so uh, that brings me to my five SEO weapons that I brought back in time uh, to share with you today in order for you to have a good chance at surviving uh, Judgment Day. Uh, my first weapon that I wanted to share with you today is actually a donkey detector, okay? <laughs> Uh, so what's this donkey detector? Well, it's actually very easy to use. It's handheld and you can just, you know, point, point it like a weapon. Uh, so how this thing works is, uh, it, it, one of the challenges in organic search is it's very, very difficult to know what your click-through rate is. Uh, secondly, it's very, very difficult to know whether or not that click-through rate is any good or not. All right, so basically, I'm gonna give you a recipe here. The first thing you do is you go into Search Console and you download your query data. You got that? Uh, you click off all those things like queries, uh, clicks, impressions, uh, and, and ranking, all right? Download that data, and now, now you have to figure out, are these click-through rates any good or not? And this is where the donkey detector comes into play. Uh, so it's very hard to know what a good click-through rate is. There's been lots of studies published about what's a good click-through rate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and here's one such study that Philip did for Moz. Uh, I'm saying ignore all that stuff. I mean, it's great, but uh, the click-through rate for your vertical varies so much based on the presence of like shopping or knowledge graph or other you know evasive things in, in the search results page that uh, a study like this in one industry might be completely irrelevant for, for, for your industry. So um, yeah, exactly. So so this, this particular example, you can see um, those blue dresses are actually going to soak up like fifty percent of the clicks. Uh, and so the click-through rates for everything else uh, on this page is going to be warped. Uh, and so instead, what I'm suggesting is you use that data that you just downloaded from query data to plot your own data. So like, so like these are my keywords and pages, and here are the, uh, the, the, the click-through rates and the rankings. Okay, you just dump that into Excel, plot an ex exponential trend line, as I've done here. Uh, and what you're doing is you're benchmarking your own keywords against themselves, all right? So you're saying, uh, the stuff that's falling really, really below that red line, those are your donkeys. And the, you know, donkeys mean they're, they're crap. It's like they're doing very badly. Uh, and, and, and those keywords and pages that are at the very, very top of the page, those are your unicorns. Those are like the sparkly, magical, rare, beautiful creatures that have very, very high click-through rates, much higher than the expected average click-through rates. And so what's the difference between a donkey and a unicorn? Well, when you look at this data, there's a huge difference between a donkey and a unicorn. The unicorns, uh, these are keywords and pages that get click-through rates that are two times higher than the average click-through rate for that given position. The donkeys, on the other hand, they do three times as, as bad as the average. Uh, this is your bottom 
And so if you can convert a donkey into a unicorn, you can actually increase the number of clicks by six times. You see what I'm saying? So the reason why I say focus on the donkeys and turning them into unicorns is because uh, you, you don't want to turn your unicorns into donkeys. Uh, <laughs> the, the, we're, we're trying to go the other way. Uh, but but it, basically, you're minimizing your risk because it was garbage to begin with, and you're maximizing your reward because it's all uphill from here. Do you see what I'm saying? So so now that we've done, we've detected the donkeys using the donkey detector, how do we convert them into unicorns? And this brings me to my number two SEO weapon from the future, which is the donkey to unicorn converter. Uh, this is even more powerful. Uh, you see this organic search result page for uh, big data solutions? These title tags all suck. Do you know why I know these suck? Uh, it's because those what I call SEO headlines, uh, the, it's basically the equivalent of dynamic keyword insertion in paid search. Okay, so dynamic p uh, keyword insertion, that's where you use the, the little funny brackets and you just parrot back the query that the person searched for and, and, and automatically insert it into the headline and the, and the, and the searcher's like, ooh, that's exactly what I was searching for. Duh, maybe I should click on this thing. No, 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 no. So, so, so w w these things do okay, but this is where having a billion or nine billion dollars of ad spend comes in handy. So I, I can do analysis on this stuff. Uh, and, and, and basically uh, what I tell you is like the, the, uh, the click-through the click -through rates of ads that use dynamic keywords insertions, they do better than average, okay? They, they, they're like, you know, up, upper middle class, you know, like 50th percentile, 60th, 70th, or 80th percentile in terms of greatness. But when it comes to the unicorns, like the ones that have like remarkably high click-through rates, like two, three, four, five times the average click-through rates, you know, top 5%, top 3%, top 1% of ads, Dynamic keyword headlines, like keyword heavy uh, headlines, are actually less likely to be uh, unicorns. Instead, um, what we've done is we've, 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 we've downloaded the top 0.0001% of these unicorn ads with like 50 or 60% click-through rates and tried to figure out what the heck makes these things tick. Like how do you get a 60% click-through rate on a non-branded term? Well, the answer is you use emotional triggers, okay? so. Uh, essentially, we're going to use one of these nine or one of these eight uh, emotions that make people click like crazy. These were the eight that we discovered. Uh, and, and basically, we're going to write the, the headlines, not from the per pers perspective of a company talking to an individual, but rather as one of these four common personas speaking to the searcher, uh, the, the, the bearer of bad news, the hero villain, the comedy, the comedian, or the feel-good friend. Uh, and so let me give, give you an example. Of, of, of how this might work, you know, four awesome SEO strategies to defeat a rank brain. The, uh, this, this format takes into consideration like the emotional hook, the content type, the topic, and, and, and a list format. Uh, and and these, these are the types of, of things that, that get clicked on uh, unusually high. Uh, in fact, uh, the, you can also, it's not just about, um, you can actually use social metrics uh, to figure out what, what headlines are, are resonating and, and, and are clicky. Uh, you know, it's been long wondering, people have always wondered, like, what's the relationship between organic shares and, and, and search rankings? You know, why is it that all of my best SEO things also do really well, have tons of shares? And, and people have always wondered, like, I wonder if Google is using those as, as, a, as a ranking factor. Well, it, it's not actually, a, it, like, it was later, this, uh, this is uh, information from the future, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it was later discovered uh, that the ranking, uh, the, the, the relationship was indirect. It's, it's basically the same emotions that make people want to share stuff like crazy on Facebook are the same emotions that make people want to click on things like crazy in the search results. And that's why uh, they both uh, appear to be related. It's kind of an indirect relationship. Uh, and in fact, I computed a bunch of like 10,000 articles uh, and looked at the engagement rates on Facebook versus the, uh, the normalized click-through rate on Google search. And what I can tell you is like the unicorns, the stuff that gets like you know, three, four, five times the expected engagement on Facebook also get three or four or five times the expected click-through rates on Google search. Uh, so basically, it's all about these headlines. Uh, and so not just any crap headlines. Uh, it has to be a unicorn headline. So think about marketers. They're all biased. They, all, they think their shit doesn't stink. They're, it's like they, they think everything they do is, is a unicorn. But really, it's not a unicorn. It's something that looks like a unicorn, like a stegosaurus or, or a narwhal or, or a mosquito or, or, or a you know, some other creature, hummingbird. It's basically, it's very, very difficult for us to know which one of these headlines 
is the unicorn and which one is the stegosaurus, uh, which is not a unicorn. And so if I'm telling you that like, you know, a unicorn is like the outlier, it's, you know, like the one in, one in, one in ten, kind of top ten, top ten uh, what you really need to do is addition multiple headlines, right? You have to be honest with yourself and try out ten different ones. Uh, and and, and pick, pick the best one, all right? Now, pop quiz, guys. How many headlines do you see here? Anyone? Four. No, 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 it's, it's actually one. See, this, this is the same headline with a different capitalization and pu punctuation. So when I say you have to actually try out 10 different headlines, I'm saying you have to try out different emotional hooks, different personas, different value props, you know, dramatically different headlines. People, people overestimate the extent of their, ad, their, their headline testing. Uh, and, 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 um, and basically what I'm suggesting is you, you do something like this instead, where, uh, where each one of these 10 headlines takes a different persona, emotional hook, benefit proposition. Uh, and so how do we now spot the unicorn? And this is where my donkey, the unicorn detector or converter comes into play. We're gonna addition these, these headlines in AdWords, okay? Uh, so the new expanded text ads that the, the Google guy was just talking about, they weren't designed to look identical to organic results, okay? That's why they were designed that way. So what we can do is, you know, the worst thing you can do is, is just, you know, willy-nilly change the headline of your content 10 times and see which one works best. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> You're gonna blow up your site. Uh, so, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take $50 and we're gonna addition the 10 headlines that we have on AdWords using this expanded text ads that looks identical to, uh, to, to the organic results. Uh, and, and basically, I want to give you some implementation notes how to do this. Uh, bid to the same position so that you're you're always uh, you know showing up in, in, you know either in second or third or first spot, whatever. Um, you don't have to go after the most expensive market if you happen to be in New York City or whatever. Uh, you, you can definitely pick Ireland or, or any, any country that has lower cost per click because it's, you're not trying to drive leads and sales. What we're trying to do is what, see what, re, what idea resonates the most. You see what I'm saying? Uh, use broad match keyword type. Okay, broad match is actually Rank Brain's baby cousin. Okay, broad match in ad, AdWords, uh, it, it basically, uh, it, it allows you to specify one word and, and the AdWords algorithm kind of additions that keyword against like a million other possible searches. You see, that's kind of what RankBrain is doing. Uh, and by using the, the broad match uh, algorithm, but sorry, the match type, uh, you, you'll, you'll be additioned to similar types of queries uh, that the RankBrain algorithms will do. Okay, so this is the summary, my donkey to unicorn converter. We're finding the, the donkeys. That's you're using your own data to find the, the, the worst performing uh, headlines, uh, right? Because we, we won't we want to go from donkeys to unicorns. We don't want to go from unicorn to donkeys. That's that's terrible. I, I hate when that happens. Uh, uh, we're going to write a bunch of headlines. We're going to addition them on AdWords. You can also addition them on Facebook. Remember, because the same ideas that make people click on search results uh, um, a lot make people want to click on things on on Facebook. Uh, and, and then we're going to look for an outlier. Uh, you know, kind of the, the one headline that has like two or three times higher click through rate. And, and if, if you don't find that outlier, if it's like if they're all the same, you actually have to throw them all out and try this exer exercise again, but you're looking for the one outlier that has like two or three times higher the click-through rates. Uh, and just one note of caution here, uh, when you're doing this implementation, um, don't use these uh, spammy sites like crowdsearch.me that <laughs> we have a click farm that'll click on your thing for free. Like, no, 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 no. Like, the, 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 this is the oldest trick in the book, guys. Uh, Google AdWords has like a $20 billion partner network uh, where, where, you know, it's like where you put ads on your site and, and there's a revenue share of uh, revenue. And, you know, that what's preventing the publisher from just clicking on their own ads to, to drive up their own revenue. Like, you know, they've been fighting this uh, fraudulent clicks for, for 15 years, and I think SEOs dramatically uh, kind of overestimate how sophisticated their click fraud things are in comparison to the, the click fraud defense systems that they, they've been perfecting for, for 15 years. Uh, all right, so we've got rank brain by the balls here. Right. Uh-oh, WTF, they have a backup system. Beep, 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 it's, it's still coming back at us. Uh, we're gonna need bigger guns here. Uh, so, so what's going on here? Uh, we're gonna need more firepower. Uh, this brings me to my number three uh, weapon from the future, which is the engagement rate uh, unicorn and, and donkey detector. Uh, so basically what's happening is 
we thought we killed off this robot, but it, it kind of put itself back together, and that's because they have a fail-safe system in place. It wasn't just about the click-through rates, uh, it was also about, it turns out, the, the engagement rates, uh, the, like the bounce, it's basically the, um, the dwell time, all right? Dwell time is like, does the person who clicks on that search result uh, end up going back to, to the search results quickly or not. Because if, if you hit back right away and you click on something else, there's a good chance that you know, that wasn't exactly what you were looking for, right? Uh, and so we can't measure dwell time because that's measured from the Google search results page, but we can measure other metrics that are proportional uh, and directly directionally equivalent to, to uh, dwell time. Uh, one of them would be bounce rate. And, and so what I did was I just computed some numbers on some data and looked at the bounce rates for, for different pieces of content within the same vertical. And what I found was that if, if you kind of get a good enough bounce rate, then you're eligible to show up uh, in, in, in prominent positions. But as the, the bounce rate gets increasingly terrible, you're less and less eligible to, to show up in, in those uh, coveted top spots. Now, keep in mind here, it's, it's a pass-fail. It's like if you increase your, 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 your stick rate, like the, if you decrease, if you, uh, decrease your bounce rate by a few points, it's like you don't get any more bonus points. It's like it just has to be good enough uh, for, for Google to think like, okay, yeah, it's good enough. Uh, so by the way, we know that Google measures this dwell time because in a blog post on a 2011 March, uh, they said they have this new feature where, where if you search on something uh, and if you, if you bounce back very quickly, there was an opportunity to actually to block that site from showing up in, in, search, in subsequent search results. Uh, and, and basically, uh, that feature never made it into prime time, but its mere existence means that we know that they're, they're tracking and using this, uh, this, this data. And they don't need to go into your Google Analytics or anything, or, or, or Chrome history. Uh, they can just get it directly from the search results page, as, as they can with the click-through rates. Uh, and so I just wanted to be very rigorous on this experiment. I looked at other metrics, including uh, time on site, which is also directionally equivalent to bounce rate and, and, um, and dwell time, and it's the same story. Uh, the more like, the longer people stay, the more likely you're uh, able to take a coveted top five position, uh, and you know, the, the worse that number falls, the less likely you, you are to, to show up in those things. By the way, you see those kinks in the graph, okay? Like, mathematicians call this a discontinuity, where it's like not smooth, it kind of switches. Um, that leads me to believe this is algorithmic in nature and not just kind of a natural, uh, you know, it's, this really looks like a pass-fail to me when you have like a kink in the curve, that there's something uh, unnatural happening like a, a, a machine learning system is, is actually pushing things around by, by, by their position. All right, so the, the key takeaway here, we're gonna use, well, my theory is Google is using the task completion rates, so like, uh, you know, conversion rates, uh, like it's, it's basically the dwell time, but they're using task completion rates to, to validate whether or not these high click-through rates are valid or not. Because I could just say free iPad or free iPhone 7 or whatever in my, head, in my dumb headline. Uh, you, you'd click on the, uh, click on the headline, uh, but if there was no free iPhones to be had, you might just go to the next one. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and so, uh, so this brings me to my, my engagement rate unicorn uh, detector. Uh, what's a good conversion rate? You basically need to know conversion rates are going to be proportional to, to dwell time because uh, you know if, if they actually do what you were hoping for them to do, that means they, they found what they were looking for, right? Uh, and so, same idea here. What's a good conversion rate? Ha happen to have billions of dollars of ad spend, so I've mapped this up for you. Uh, basically, on the internet, the median conversion rate is pretty terrible. It's around 2%. The top 25% of advertisers are able to get that to 5.3%, but there's these magical unicorn advertisers that are able to get it to 11.45 and above. How do they do that? Uh, you know, one, one thing that's interesting about this is that that was from all the industries, but even when I like look at, look at uh, different sectors like finance or insurance or shopping, the donkeys are always three to five times uh, or the unicorns are always three to five times better than the donkeys for, for any, any uh, uh, industry. Uh, and so uh, it's kind of like, like we, we need a way to, to, to turn these conversion rate donkeys into unicorns uh, as an SEO strategy. Uh, and so the good news is that you're already half there. So by raising the click-through rates of the listings, uh, you've actually raised your conversion rates. Why? Because if you get people excited about clicking on some listing as opposed to, like, oh God, I'm gonna just click on this listing, it turns out that excitement carries through to a purchase or sign up. Do you see what I'm saying? So, uh, so you're halfway there. Um, 
uh, I can tell you how not to do it. Uh, don't, don't, don't do this. This is like the great A-B testi uh, testing fairy tale. It's, it's a stupid story. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's like once upon a time there was this landing page that was converting at like 3% and lo and behold we changed the font color or the spacing or some other dumb you know on-page element and we saw like a 5% increase in conversions. Well the problem with that story is it's a fairy tale. What happens is uh, the winner, the, the, the gains don't stick, okay? So it, there, there's this notion of the reason why that worked was because it's new, it, it looks different. But the problem with that approach is there's such, such a thing as fatigue. Uh, the, 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 thing, the, the, the new look, like the new fall fashion look uh, in winter <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work anymore. So, 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 you, so this degrades and you end up just like the winner becomes the loser. Uh, even, even if it was declared a significant, uh, statistically significant, significant winner, uh, instead, uh, what I, I'd suggest that you do is you focus on like the big changes rather than the little changes. So, uh, so say you had a crappy offer, like a donkey offer, and you're making these little superficial changes. You're basically summiting Donkey Hill here. Uh, but the problem with Donkey Hill is there's no way to summit Donkey Hill uh, to, to get to Unicorn Hill. You, you actually have to, 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 to go after a different offer. Uh, it, so basically, uh, I'm suggesting it's like lipstick on a pig versus like coming up with a truly compelling, differentiating uh, offer. When I look at uh, billions of dollars of ad spend and figure out what are the things that are converting at you know 20%, the, the common denominator is not A/B testing; it's massive offer differentiation. All right. So I just wanted to give you one example uh, from my own personal life here over the last seven or eight years. Um, and when I started WordStream, I had this thing, uh, a software program, and it was like, sign up for a free trial of this PPC software, right? And, and like, duh, that's what all software companies do. They have a free trial of their software. Like, well, what, what, what offer should we do, Larry? I think we should do a free trial. The, like, no, 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 no. Like, the, the problem with that was I was converting at like two or three percent, you know? It was a donkey. Uh, and so three years into this business, uh, I came up uh, with an epif epiphany. I was like, you know what? These people, my customers, are not looking for a free trial of my thing, no matter how great it is. What they really want to know is how they're doing in their AdWords, like are they doing any, any good or not, you know? And so I just switched the offer from being a free trial to being a report card. So the report card takes 10 seconds, it just downloads your data, it kind of gives you a report card on how you're doing. This thing has dramatically changed my business from being like a you know, single digit million dollar company to like, well, much larger, we'll just say. Uh, so, so, so basically, um, great news, guys. We, we got them. We've terminated this, this rank brain thing. It's all about the, you know, fixing your, your engagement rates and your click-through rates and your conversion rates. Uh, now what? Are we going to just call it a day here? No, 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 no. We've got to make sure this, this, these algorithms are really tricky. We've got to make sure that this guy never messes with us again. And the way that we're going to kind of eliminate him like now and forever in the future is to do time travel. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to mess with people's minds before they search on our stuff. Uh, and so what do I mean by this? Uh, this is my fourth SEO weapon. This is Facebook ads and Google Display Network. Um, Guys, what's the point of marketing and, and, and advertising for that matter? What's the point of all this marketing and advertising? The point is to create a bias, okay? So when I do advertising or marketing uh, to my target market, what I'm doing is I'm promoting some kind of memorable or inspirational piece of content uh, to my target market uh, about what it is that makes me so special and why you should do business with me. People, my target market will then consume that content. They won't necessarily buy my stuff right away, but we've created a bias in their head. Later, when the need does arise for them to purchase the products or services that you're selling, they'll either A, do a branded search, in which case you've won, right? Because a branded search has 66% click-through rates, so that you've got a very good chance of winning there. Or they'll do an unbranded search, but then they'll remember your business and instead of just having a one in 10 chance of being clicked on, you'll actually have a one in three chance of being clicked on. All right, so, so basically what I'm suggesting here is that advertising dramatically impacts organic click-through rates and conversion rates, which impacts rankings. Uh, and so there's tons of studies uh, done by Facebook 
Uh, obviously, Facebook would, would want to claim that, that, that this makes a big deal on, on, on click-through rates. But even in my own experiments, I didn't publish this here, unfortunately, but even in my own experiments, like the, what, you, what you can do is you can just look at the conversion rates and click-through rates and segment by new and repeat visitors. Okay? And what you will find is that the repeat visitors have three times the conversion rates and, and three times the, the click-through rates. So meaning brand affinity has a tremendous impact on click-through rates and conversion rates. Uh, and so, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Facebook ads to promote our memorable, inspiring content to our target market so that later when they search for stuff, they will click on our stuff. Uh, and so how would we do this? Here's what I do for my business. I target like interests, like people who purchase HubSpot or people who are interested in AdWords or people who are interested in entrepreneurship. I cast a narrow net uh, around people. And, and by the way, for like $2, you get a thousand impressions. So like I can, you know, I can hit, you know, two or $3 million uh, people for, 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 you know, a couple, couple thousand dollars. It's not, it's not going to kill you. Uh, there's demographic uh, targeting. Uh, this is where maybe you're, you're a jeweler. Uh, who are you going to target? You're going to target people who are recently engaged. They're not, people, men are never going to spend this much money uh, in their life. They're going to search for you, search for, for the jeweler like nearby, uh, and, and, and you want to ha make them have happy thoughts towards your brand. Uh, there's behavioral targeting. This is purchase, targeting people who've purchased certain things recently in, in the past. So like, you know, if you're, if you're doing a travel destination, target people who have like frequent flyer accounts, like Platinum United Air or whatever. Um, Here's another tricky one. Um, it's called Google Display Network Custom Affinity Audiences. Okay, so what this is doing is it's, it's showing up those banner ads based on people's browsing histories. All right, so like if, if, if people search, landed on search engine land or other, other publications that I think are where my target market hangs out, I can just have my banner ads show up when, when people, uh, for, for people who visited those sites because Google, 50% uh, of you when you're surfing the web, you're logged into Google and Google maintains your, your search history. Um, another thing you can do is you can take your, your best customers and clone them, all right? So you take the customer list and, and find you know, an audience 10 or 100 or 1,000 times bigger that have the matching demographics, interests, and purchasing behavior and browsing behavior. Uh, and those are the types of people who are likely to buy from you. So you're basically priming them uh, to, to favor your, your search results. Uh, the, the Google guy was talking about the micro moments uh, just a little while ago. If you're just waiting for people to search for stuff and the micro moment, you're too late. You've lost. Okay? It's, it's like a suicide mission. There's so many ads, so many competing organic search results. You, you've got a 1 in 20 chance. Right? So, so don't wait for the micro moment. You need to get to these people uh, and tell them why you're so special before they search. Uh, and, and so, uh, so that's time traveling to the, to the past. Let's time travel to the future to make sure that every subsequent search from these people go your way. How do we do this? It's using the power of remarketing. Uh, I'll be back. I've always wanted to say that. Sorry. Uh, here's here's my, my, one of my customers. It's called Love Pop Cards. Uh, you may have heard of them because they were on Shark Tank last fall and they actually got a deal with, with Mr. Wonderful. They're based in, in Boston and the founders are friends of mine. They even made a unicorn card. I, I kind of was the inspiration of that. Uh, but, but basically what, what they do is they, they, they go on things like Shark Tank uh, which generates a tremendous amount of traffic to their website, okay? We then tag them and then play these like really flashy, you know, high saturated color video ads uh, uh, on, on uh, Facebook and, and, and other uh, advertising venues. They don't purchase right away, uh, but, but eventually uh, they'll, they'll, when the need arises, like birthday greetings is a ridiculously difficult uh, market because I don't know when their birthday is. They're not even buying it for themselves. They're buying it for someone else. Like you have to know when your friend's birthdays are. It's, it's impossible. So, so what we did was we, we just bias people, we tag them, and make it so that they always remember them, this thing, so that later when, when the need arises, they buy this. And this is the ad targeting stack that I'm using. Uh, it just, it, it, you're just segmenting out different audiences based on the duration, the like one day, three day, seven day, you know, 30 day kind of thing. You, you, uh, you, you uh, eliminate the overlap and, and basically uh, kind of tell them a story about your brand. Uh, this stuff is very cheap uh, because um, Videos tend to be very, very engaging. High engagement rate ads on Facebook lead to very, very low cost per click. It's less than one penny per impression, per video view. Uh, so, so even with a $7 product, uh, they're able to, to make profit off of the first sale. Um, just one last piece of advice here. Um, 
as I get in trouble for this one on, on, on Twitter sometimes, uh, I'm suggesting that you delete your bad neighborhoods, okay? So um, what does this mean? Uh, it means if you have bad neighborhoods in your website that have really crappy, crappy click-through rates and really high bounce rates, um, instead of waiting for the bombs to drop on your website, you should just, like, if you're not able to fix them using the techniques that I've outlined here, you should just delete them. Now, some people think, like, wait a minute, uh, if, it's, if it's not doing any harm, why not just keep them? Uh, and, and to that I say, listen, uh, this is, Google has said that these new user engagement things like rank, brain, they're a uh, ranking factor. Ranking factor is the operable word. Uh, if, if something is a ranking factor, that means there has to be a score uh, to, in order to compare site A with site B. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, so, so basically, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult for them to have you know, scores for every single combination of keyword and, and, and page on your site. And so what they do uh, in, in PageRank and what they do in, in Google AdWords Quality Score is they, they, they use domain scores uh, the, where the more specific scores aren't available. Uh, and, and basically what I'm telling you is that your bad neighborhoods are actually uh, hurting you uh, in terms of your, your domain score. It's kind of like if I had told you to delete your link farms like a week before Penguin hit or to, del to delete, delete your, your content farms before Panda hit, that would actually have been a very smart move. Uh, and and uh, it's the same thing for, 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 for this algorithm. All right, guys, mission complete. Congratulations, everyone. We've beaten this rank brain thing. What does it all mean? Uh, I think what it means is uh, it's, things are changing. SEO is changing. Uh, the old bag of tricks. Uh, they're not working as good as they used to work uh, in the past. Uh, my good friend Marcus Tober of Search Metrics even has studies showing that tried and true uh, optimizations like keyword and title and number of backlinks uh, are showing negative correlations with rankings. So like uh, <laughs> the more keyword stuffing you do, the less effective that, that it actually is. Uh, and the reason is because like nobody clicks on those stupid titles. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, guys. Don't just wait for these machine learning algorithms to hit. Uh, there's no fate but what we make. Um, we need to get into the virtuous cycle of, of, of unicorn land, which is we're going to cr use these tactics and tri tricks to improve our click-through rates and conversion rates. Why? Like, forget about all these bonus points and rankings. Like, e if you increase your click-through rates, you can get six times more clicks. Okay, just full stop. That alone is, is, is a really interesting reason to, to focus on these optimizations. But if I'm right, and I, I believe I'm correct, uh, that you, Google will notice those increases in, in, in clicks and, and, and engagement rates and conversion rates and will reward you with even more clicks and conversions. It becomes a virtuous cycle of unicorn land. And when you get there, it is so beautiful and sunny and never rains and it's sparkly. Guys, the opposite of unicorn land is the death spiral of, of rank brain and other machine uh, language algorithm dungeon, uh, which is you start off with start off with your crap content and websites, and, you know, which means you're not getting a lot of clicks and, and conversions to begin to, to begin with, uh, and, and then you get penalized for this, uh, and then it just it just goes down the drain. So. Be open to the power of advertising and remember what the purposes of advertising and how it works. We're, we're getting inspirational, uh, memorable content in front of our target audience uh, in the hopes of biasing them on future purchasing decisions. Uh, and, and that has a tremendous impact on click-through rates and conversion rates. So guys, be a unity of donkeys. Thank you so much, Confluence Conference and organizers. This is a great community.